Thanks for staying with us on Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Sharad Kutten. We're talking to Zaid Ibrahim, former minister. Now, just before the break, you talked a little bit about the failure of us, uh, our failure to think straight. Could you elaborate on what you mean by that? How did we get to this point? Yeah, I, well, before, I, I want to interject. Yes. I think what, what you touch on is so important. There, there is a kind of, and let's, let's bring Simco back into the picture, <laughs> that they, they claim pragmatism as a central operating principle, mm. right? The world changes, you had to change with it. Uh, facts on the ground change, you identify it and you work with those facts pragmatism as opposed to this kind of ideological but kind of not of <laughs> emotional pandering yeah. pandering mm. to trolls whatever it is kind of strategy of making policy no I think the not thinking straight is <laughs> is because they are either they are cowards or they are not uh, they're not being pragmatic actually they just, they have, there's some fear somewhere based on some ideology or some ideas of the past. I'll give you an example of the Chinping ashes, mm. for example. Mm. You see, when Chinping wanted to come back, we said no. There was an agreement, you know, signed between Chinping and our government that he could come back. He couldn't come back because he didn't have an IC. We violated our own agreement. We violated our own agreement. He had no IC because when you're a communist in the jungle, you had no IC. <laughs> we don't have an IC even in the estates today. Mm. So for us to expect him to have an IC, but he was able to produce kins, relatives, people in Stiawan or whatever. He said no. So when you violate your own agreement, you're being dishonorable. And then, suddenly, many years later, the relative said, I want to bring back the ashes because he wanted to come back. He wanted to die in his motherland. Okay, we may not think that he is a good guy. He's probably very brutal, very cruel. But that's the past. We cannot get away from the past. It cannot be our feelings against communism because we were very forgiving to uh, Rashid Maidin and the other Malay communists of those times. We were, we are very very nice to Zeping now. He's a communist. If, if you're talking the about, Japanese, we forgive the British. We're talking, <laughs> talking about brutalities of Jinping. The Japanese killed more people, were more brutal. But because the Japanese are rich, because we need the sok samurai bond, <laughs> we are very nice. We don't feel angry with the Japanese. I mean, let's think straight. Jinping is one of is is a, is a Malaysian. So, so and he's dead. He cannot do much more damage. Your argument of using this this case of this is an example of not thinking straight is an example of what pandering to popular no, opinion. We of must not move on from the past. Okay. We cannot go on saying the Chinese are like this because in those days, the, you know, they came here. They were not originally from here. You know, people talk about the past. Right. We have to move out of. We're kind of stuck. And in that's that. when you have to think straight. Mm. We cannot make this country strong if we keep stuck, stuck in the history, stuck in the false narrative of the past. And, I, and this is why I feel the leader's responsibility to open up the people. I, I want to ask you, you know, you use that expression, and this was with regard to the uh, PH government, they don't see the storm coming. Do you think Ma Malaysians as a whole don't see the storm coming? There are so many reasons to be fearful of the world changing of very course. rapidly. Of course. And we're already seeing the downside. Malaysians are going working illegally in Australia. They're working illegally in South Korea. They are becoming what they used to despise. I am sure one day, if we don't change, we'll be working in Bangladesh. Because the rate of the growth in Bangladesh economy now is much, much faster than us. So we're going to reverse this in, in no time. So the, what I'm trying to say is that whilst we have it, we have to hold this country dear and we must do whatever is necessary to keep our people prosperous and happy and together and we must discard all those thinking of the past 
Wh when you say we, you are referring to the people of Malaysia no, or no. the government? Of I'm talking about the leaders. Oh, the leaders the, the of, of Malaysia. Okay, to, the government. to yes. really have their priorities yes. right when yes, it comes because, to this. Because you look at the Chinese, for example, before this transformation by the, the right, they had wrong leaders. They were poor. Mm. But when they had the right leaders, they're prosperous. The same thing with Vietnam, but the same thing with India or whatever country, you know. You look at Rwanda. Rwanda is the fastest growing economy in Africa. And yet, only not so long ago, they killed each other. There was civil war. There was genocide. So we have to decide what we want to be. And I, I, I know it's the end. <laughs> when I say we, I'm talking about Pakatan, really, because I hope they get their act together. Mm. Dr. Mahathir must invite Anwar into the government. Anwar needs a bit of time to weather the political storm from Barisan, mm. from Amno. And I think the longer we dilly-dally, the longer we talk about uh, Anwar taking over to the, to the foreign press rather than to the local press, the less we do of that and, and, and get on with it, then we will have a, a very much tougher time to change and to continue with the reform. All right. On that note, thank you so much for being on the show today. That was Zaid Ibrahim, former law minister on Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kut, and we are signing off for tonight. Catch us same time tomorrow night. Uh, thank you for watching and good night.